What's up everybody? This decision tree is the outcome of the model that we'll train to predict if a loan will be repaid or not. Let's jump into the code and start by taking a look at our data. We'll start by importing the necessary package and then we can define df and assign it to pd.readcsv and then the csv name which is loans loans dataset.csv This dataset is in the github and I left the link in the description then we separate by comma and now we can take a look at the land of the dataset and we can do print dataset land which is land of the f so we have 1000 rows in this dataset and we can also check the shape of our data frame for that shape and here shape besides the 1000 rows we also have six columns we can also take a look at our they have info we can see that we have initial payment last payment credit score house number sum and result and they are all integers besides the result which is an object and will be the target variable we can also check if the df has no values by calling df dot is null and we can even do the sum and we can see that there is zero null values for all the columns and now we can take a look at the data by calling the df as and you can also call the df tail and instead of seeing the first five rows we'll see the last five rows so here to verify if the result column only have yes and no we can check by df with result dot value counts so we have 521 no's and 479 yes with this value it seems that we have a balanced data in case we had uh, in balanced data we would need to do more processing but in this case it is not needed let's jump into the data transformation in our case we'll drop the sum column so the f drop columns equal to the sum and we'll do in place equal true then since that our result column has values of no and yes we need to transform these strings into a binary value so let's perform a transformation where the values in the result column are replaced with the binary value one if the original value is yes and zero otherwise and to do that we call the df result assigned to np dot where df result again is equal to yes this will be one otherwise zero once this data set is pretty clean we don't need to perform further data transformation for now so we'll jump into the split data so let's start by splitting the data into x and y where the x will be df dot drop columns equal to result and the y will be only the df result let's run this now in the next step we'll need to split the train and test data and for this i will show you a hack to increase your productivity in the description of this video you have a link that takes you to a lot of resources and one of them is this sheet sheet you have a lot of information to help you in machine learning one of the things that we'll use is this train test split we can copy this one and paste it here let me change this with this we can split our train and test data and besides this i also want to add the test side and for that you can write test size and instead of the default which is 0 0.25 we'll write 0 0.3 uh, it's missing a comma now we can check the land of x train and the land of x test as you can see we have 700 in the x train and 300 in the x test see how this is useful 
make sure you subscribe and I will give you more tips like this. Now let's move on to the decision tree and classification. So let's define decision tree model equal to decision tree classifier and here we can write the criterion equal to entropy random state equal to 100 max depth equal to 3 and minimum samples equal to 5. Now the decision tree model is defined, we can fix the X train and Y train. For that, we copy this one and then dot fit X train and Y train. It's missing an S here. Okay, now we can calculate the Y prediction, which will be equal to the decision tree model dot predict and then the X test. And we can visualize the Y pred. And this is the prediction of the X test. So now we can print the scores of our prediction. Oh, I need to change this. Um, well, the training set accuracy score is 96 while the test set accuracy is 92. These values are quite comparable, so there is no sign of overfitting. Can delete this. Then it's time to visualize our decision tree. We have two options. The first one that I will show will be the test representation, which is equal to the tree dot export text dt tree model and we can print the text representation Oops. So here you can see the visualization of the decision tree and this is one of the reasons why the decision tree is an algorithm for machine learning that is interpretable it is easy to understand why a prediction is classified as 0 or 1. Now we can also take a look at our decision tree using a visualization. And for that we need to write fig equal to plot figure and then fig size equal to for example 2520. Then the class name it should be equal to the list of string label for label in dt model classes. I need to change this decision tree model. So basically you can use what you define here decision tree model, this is the correct, and you can simply write tree plot tree, again the tree model, and then feature names, which will be equal to x columns, so you are getting the names of the, the columns in the x set, then class names equal to class names which was already defined and then you can also write field equal to true so let me check this it's missing an s here there is missing um oh yeah parentheses here All right this is our the decision tree where we start this video so this is the outcome of our model that is classifying a loan repayment prediction. Using this you can understand based on the values if the algorithm will classify as class 1 or class 0. Now let's do the model evaluation with the confusion matrix. And that's simple. You can write print and then confusion matrix of y test and y pred. 
And if you run this, you get the confusion matrix. And based on our algorithm, it seems pretty cool. So if you check the cheat sheets that I have available in the description, you can see that the false negatives are pretty low, 16, and that the false positives are also pretty low, 8. This is another cheat sheet that is very useful, and you have a lot of information about machine learning. Now let's make some predictions using our algorithm. If this video reaches 50 likes, I will make a tutorial on how to deploy this project with Flask, like this one. So you can make predictions in a web browser. This is something really cool to have in your portfolio. But for now, let's keep it simple and continue with the notebook. So to make some predictions, let's first try to understand the data and the mean that we have for each column. And for that, we can write x dot describe and then let's lock the mean and doing this we know that the mean for each column is these one values so for that imagine that we have a client with the following values and p dot array and then we can insert for example let's start with these values to see what what do we get? 294, 12, 4. And now to make a prediction, let's write the same. Decision tree model, predict the client. Let's see the prediction for this client. Zero. So using our machine learning model, that we trained and created, it tells us that a client with these values will be able to repay the loan. Let's try to change some numbers and see what happens. So here we can keep 300. Here the last payment, let's say it is less than 1000. Here in the credit score, let's say that it is worst, for example, 300. And here, I don't know, maybe 4000. So if we run this, we can see that for this client, the loan repayment prediction is not good. We predict that this client will probably not repay the loan. Well, everyone, if you like machine learning tutorials like this one, make sure you subscribe to the channel because I'm posting at least one per week, along with other videos related with data science and Python. Don't forget to leave a like to support this content. See you in the next video. Peace out.